In this video, I'd like to continue talking about the angle of complex numbers by looking at another example problem. And we have this complex number z, which is equal to minus 7 minus 6i, and we need to find the angle theta now in degrees that z makes in the complex plane. And remember that once we plot this complex number, this angle theta is measured relative to this positive real axis. So let's start by plotting this number on the complex plane. And it has a real part of negative 7. So I actually need one more tick mark here. And it has an imaginary part of minus 6i, which would be down here. And we can plot this right about here. And let's draw a line between this point and the origin, or Essentially, we're drawing the vector to this complex number, and this vector, it has a length, and it has an angle. And this angle is measured relative to the positive real axes, and we can call this angle theta. And to figure out what this angle theta is, we can construct a right triangle here, where we can draw a vertical line that is perpendicular to the real axes and a horizontal line that's parallel to the real axes. And we can figure out what this angle on the inside of the triangle is. And we can call this whatever we want. Let's call it theta one. And once we figure out this triangle on the inside, we can recognize that this angle right here going from the positive real axis all the way to the other side is essentially negative 180 degrees. Since remember that when we're counting angles in the clockwise direction, they are negative. Whereas if we counted an angle in the counterclockwise direction, that would be a positive angle. So going halfway around would bring us to negative 180 or negative pi if we were in radians. But since we know this entire angle is negative 180, if we figure out this angle theta one, we can just add that to this to figure out this angle theta. And I should mention there are other approaches to this. We can use a formula for figuring out this angle theta, which is just the inverse tangent of the imaginary part divided by the real part. And we will derive that in a later video but that really only works on the right half of the complex plane. For complex numbers that fall on the left half, we have to use a little bit of trigonometry to essentially shift the angle. But we will cover that approach later on. I will mention it at the end of this video, how we might approach that. But for this problem, let's just focus on this picture, figure out this angle on the inside of this right triangle and add it to minus 180 to figure out this green angle theta. And since this is a right triangle, we know this length here, this is just the imaginary component, and we're talking about the length, so essentially the absolute value of this, which would be six, and likewise, the length of the horizontal component would be the absolute value of its real part, which is seven, and because we have this right triangle, we can use the right triangle trigonometry. We can use our SOHCAHTOA. And we have the side opposite the angle, and we have the side adjacent the angle. So we have O and A, which means we should use tangent. And we can say that the tangent of theta 1 is equal to the ratio of the opposite side, which is 6, divided by the adjacent side, which is seven. And to figure out what theta one is, we would need to take an inverse tangent of each side. Since remember that when you plug the function into the inverse function, you get back the independent variable, which in this case is theta. So we can take an inverse tangent of each side of this equation, or essentially we're plugging this inside of the inverse tangent. And we do that on both sides the equation. Now on the left hand side, the tangent and the inverse tangent essentially cancel each other out and we just get theta one is equal to the inverse tangent of six 
over 7. And again, that will give us this orange theta 1 here, which is not exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for the angle measured to this point, this vector here, from the positive real axis. So really we want this angle here. But once we figure this out, we can just add it to negative 180 since that's the total angle measure all the way from the real axis to the negative real axis. And for this, we'll have to plug it into our calculator. And since we want our answer in degrees, we need to make sure our calculator is in degree mode. And we will approximate it since this will be an irrational number. And this will evaluate to 40.6 approximately. And this is again in degrees. Now, like I mentioned, we need to add this to negative 180. So imagine starting at this positive real axis and rotating all the way to the negative real axis going in the clockwise direction. So once you're at the negative real axis, again, rotating clockwise, this would be at minus 180. And then we're going to essentially add 40.6 degrees back to get to this line here, this vector. And theta would just be minus 180 plus 40.6 degrees. And we should be careful. This is really an approximation since this is a rounded answer. And this should simplify. If we add 40 to minus 180, that brings us to minus 140. And adding 0.6 more brings us to minus 139.4 degrees. So theta, the angle that this complex number makes in the complex plane is approximately minus 139.4 degrees, which should make some intuitive sense because if it was at minus 90, that would bring us to the negative imaginary axis. If it's minus 180, that brings us to the negative real axis, and it's somewhere in the middle of that, which we can visually confirm by just plotting the point. Now I did mention there is an alternate approach to this rather than just drawing the picture and slowly thinking it through. We can also derive a formula, which we'll do in a later video, that this angle theta is always equal to the inverse tangent of the imaginary part of Z divided by the real part of Z. And once we find this angle, then we need to use information about which coordinate or which quadrant, I should say, the complex number is in. And we can use the identity that the tangent of theta is equal to the tangent of 180 degrees plus theta, or it's equal to the tangent of minus 180 degrees plus theta. And essentially, we can always compare the inside of these functions, which in some sense is what we did here. Since we found the answer to this formula, that was 40.6, and then we used this identity here, that the tangent of theta is equal to the tangent of minus 180 degrees plus theta. We plugged in theta, which is 40.6, down here, added minus 180 to it, and found the answer that we're looking for. Now, this approach can be a little bit confusing if you're not familiar with these identities, which in some sense is why it's often better to just draw this picture and think it through from basic principles.